So did you hear? TV has a chance to actually be funny again. I mean, I doubt it, but one can dream. Much like during the last time the U.S. economy was in the toilet in 2007-2008, writers in Hollywood are striking, signaling a temporary end to the drivel that were given on a nightly basis in the form of late-night talk shows. Among other popular television shows and movies, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Late Night with Seth Meyers, and The Daily Show will be shut down immediately beginning yesterday, Tuesday, after the Writers Guild of America, WGA, officially announced they're on strike. Other notable shows that are seen weekly that will be affected by the strike are Saturday Night Live, Real Time with Bill Maher, and Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Saying all that, my question becomes, where's the problem? <laughs> Hey everybody, your resident man in black is back again for a new edition of the best kept secret in the conservative movement, things that need to be said. From our CTV, I'm Nick Kingatis. Really quick, head on over to Rumble, subscribe to our channel, and hit that plus button. And no matter where you watch our videos, please share, like, and don't be afraid to leave a comment. I actually read what you guys have to say, and I occasionally respond, so don't be shy. Now, on with the show. Now, I know a lot of you are done with Hollywood. I understand that. But we can't take away from the very real fact that politics is downstream from culture, or at least it used to be until Hollywood became just another tool of the establishment machine in Washington. Now, just indulge me here, because I think this writer's strike could signal a cultural shift in the pop culture landscape, as well as the country as a whole. You have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. If you're old enough, how many of you remember when late night talk shows and their influence meant something? Think about it. When Johnny Carson was host of The Tonight Show, if you were a stand-up comedian, were lucky enough to perform on the show and then get the seal of approval from Johnny, whether it was a thumbs up or him even calling the comic over to sit and talk for a couple of minutes, you were a made man in the industry. Sitcoms followed, whether starring in or writing them, and even movies were possibilities if you did well on that show. Same thing with David Letterman. While he wasn't my favorite late night host, you can't take away that he was also a star maker, especially when it came to musicians and bands. Getting to play your song on Late Night with David Letterman meant you were going to get some serious gigs across the country in short order. Please welcome back to the program, Foo Fighters. Pearl Jam, folks! Please welcome the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Audio Slave. And over there with our uh, band tonight, a uh, wonderful musical talent, John Mayer, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. All night long. When Jay Leno hosted The Tonight Show, coming from a stand-up comedy background himself, he continued The Tonight Show tradition of showcasing stand-up comedians. But he and the writers he had on that show also knew how to promote the hell out of the newest blockbuster movie that was coming out. People fought to get a spot on the show in order to promote their latest film. And finally, who I believe to be the last important late night talk show host was Conan O'Brien. O'Brien, who was a Harvard graduate, who paid his dues in the business by being a writer on Saturday Night Live in the late 80s and early 90s, understood the importance of catering to a younger audience. So 20 years later, that same audience would continue watching his shows merely out of habit. O'Brien placed a focus on sketch comedy and allowed comedians to sit and banter with him where the comedian would do their thing while O'Brien facilitated their act, playing the straight man to boost how funny the comic was. But uh, what's the movie gonna be called? <laughs> well, really? I know what it's gonna be called. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> if it's got Carrot Top in it, you know what a good name for it'd be? What's that, Norm? Box Office Poison. <laughs> There's this movie coming out. Yes. Title undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh. All right. Do something with that, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D. <laughs> Now, besides Bill Maher, none of the shows I listed at the top have been culturally relevant in some time. Following the 2016 election of former President Donald Trump, these late night shows shunned actual comedy in favor of whatever message had either been pre-approved by helpful monologue writers like Senator Chuck Schumer, or whichever miracle drug was to be promoted because the show was brought to you by Pfizer. Essentially, far left sellouts like Colbert and Kimmel repeat 
repeated whatever establishment messages, narratives, and agendas Democrats in Washington, as well as their lackeys in the media, told them to say. They got, and still get paid, a lot of money to indoctrinate audiences for the years they've been on TV. Colbert literally danced around and sang songs with syringes, trying to get people to take an experimental drug, while Kimmel cried during monologues written with the aforementioned help of an actual senator. Fallon kind of just says what he has to and will occasionally be entertaining, but not because of anything clever he or his writers have to say, but because of the celebrity guests he has on involving themselves in strange situations. Seth Meyers? Well, Myers hasn't been funny since his days at the Weekend Update desk on Saturday Night Live, and even then, it was his counterparts and colleagues displaying their comedic chops to his straight man delivery that gave him any level of notoriety at all. Think cardboard cutout, and you'll understand the depth, talent, and charisma of Myers. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to say more than a sentence or two about this guy, but John Oliver is what you get when you forget that we fought a war not to have to listen to the British anymore and pretend like what he says is profound merely because of a foreign accent. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Saturday Night Live, or SNL as longtime fans like myself might call it, hasn't been funny since the last major cast exodus when names like Bill Hader, Kristen Wiig, Jason Sudeikis, Andy Samberg, Vanessa Bear, and others were still on the show. SNL has always been left-leaning, but it at least they somewhat gave a damn about making people laugh instead of making a point, which usually falls flat in the last few years. If it weren't for Kenan Thompson, who knows if SNL would even still exist? And maybe I'm spoiled, because the cast I grew up with was loaded. I'm talking Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Dana Carvey, Mike Myers, Norm MacDonald, Tim Meadows, David Spade, Rob Schneider, Chris Rock, Kevin Nealon, Jim Brewer, Jan Hooks, Will Ferrell, Daryl Hammond, and Victoria Jackson. And I'm probably missing a couple, which I'll kick myself for later, but those days of SNL were stacked with talented people. Besides Kenan Thompson, name me one current SNL cast member. I'll wait. Yeah. Me either. And the only reason you knew Thompson is because he's been on the show for 20 years. Anyway, back to the point. The sick part of this whole thing is that the current crop of writers in most professions on any level actually think they're doing a good enough job that they need to strike in order to get more money out of their deals. And listen, if you're good at what you do, you should fight to make as much money as you can. Half of these supposed writers can't even spell, so there's that. I am the smart, S-M-R-T. I mean, S-M-A-R-R-T. But when you write absolute garbage on a consistent basis and still think that you've earned a better salary, then the writer's level of hubris is close to meeting no equal. Who knows? Maybe being without the writers that have created the suck fest that is most of today's major TV shows and movies, it could benefit the people as much as another rumored shutdown, that of the federal government. So. Despite it being a departure from politics, which most of us sorely need from time to time, were these things that needed to be said? Let me know in the comments where I do read most and reply to some. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Rumble and hit that plus button. If you like this video, don't forget to share, comment, and give it a thumbs up. Those are the best ways to help these videos reach more people, and it's the best way to let us know you want us to keep these videos coming. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that YouTube might actually let you know when MRC TV comes out with a new video if they haven't censored it or taken it down yet. Like us on Facebook. Facebook, check out more of our work at mrctv.org, and if you want to support our content and the conservative movement, head on over to mrc.org slash donate to help us out since we're a nonprofit and couldn't do what we do without all of you. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kingadis.